I am vengeance. I am the night. I am Batman. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Amon, and that's Jemmy. Uh, today, we start this episode with um, some heartbreaking news. Uh, just earlier today, it was reported that Kevin Conroy has unfortunately passed away. Uh, most of you, most of you should know who he is. If not, he is um, as what I like to call the definitive voice of Batman. Uh, his voice was the one we grew up with as kids, and what most of us imagined Batman would sound like. And uh, and usually when celebrities pass away or die, I don't get so emotional. It doesn't affect me as much. But this this in this particular instance, I just feel empty, and this feels unreal just because of the impact his character has had on my life. How have you been processing it, Jimmy? It's interesting. Some of the first, you know, um, superheroes are pretty big in my family. So some of the first actual moments I remember having interactions or reading some classic, you know, uh, War of Light books. Then it was also watching, you know, uh, Batman versus Batman and Superman cartoons. You know, I'd watch the Batman cartoon, Batman the Animated Series. You'd watch Superman. You have the crossovers. Then you had Justice League or Batman Beyond. This man quite literally voiced my childhood. The funny thing I was thinking about is he didn't just voice my childhood, he voiced my entire life because he never stopped being Batman. He has been, the animated series was his first role as Batman and he's been mm-hmm. doing it. It just celebrated like his 30th year anniversary. So that's 30 years exactly. playing the character exactly. across video games, cartoons, uh, mm-hmm. even live action appearances. It's just, it's a lot to take in, definitely. Definitely, yeah. Like I grew up watching um, my first um you could say interaction with uh, Kevin Conroy's Batman was with Justice League and Justice League Unlimited. That was my childhood. I grew up watching those shows. Uh, and when I, and then after I finished those, I went back and watched Batman the Animated Series. And then it just, you know, it just cemented him as... That just cemented Batman as a whole as my favorite superhero. And it was Conroy's mm-hmm. voice that did that. And, you know, he made me fall in love with the superhero genre. And then after that, I went deeper into the comic book route and all of that. And, you know, maybe without... Conroy's Batman voice frame by frame might not have been a thing because that that his voice was one of my first exposure to uh, a superhero and uh, yeah now and now I'm here week in week out talking about superhero movies and TV shows. Um, I also want to uh, give a special mention to the Arkham games, my favorite gaming trilogy of all time: Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Knight. His distinct gravelly voice used. The, the gravelly voice he used in those gave me goosebumps all over and you know it just left me in awe thinking that you know that that's my batman you know that, you know that's... to your point to your point about inspiration i think that's one thing that really can't be missed the two pe- the two way punch of batman of batman 89 and batman the animated series arguably kind of set the superior trajectory genre as a whole for what it is today that really, you know, was able to spawn Batmania, invest in the public, not just seeing superheroes as oh, just comic books, but actually something that the general populace would get involved in. You know, this was mm-hmm. one of the most Batman the Animated Series, one of the most popular cartoons when it was on. Period. It was the first Definitely. superhero cartoon still to really is. do that. It's yeah, still it still is, is. exactly. People, you've got yeah, you got people watching it on HBO Max to this day. I one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite. Um, what's it called, YouTube channels uh, that I really like, and perfectly pretentious. He's doing a watch through right now. He's going watch through, analyzing a lot of the different episodes. It's still one. Not only that, but you've got writers like, um, oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, the the uh, White Knight series, Sean Murphy. He takes a lot of inspiration and stuff and talks about where's it on his sleeve, how Batman, the animated series, is very much an inspiration for the Batman work he's writing right now to this day. So you've got people inside the industry and outside the industry who are directly inspired by, you know, these voice actors, Mark Hamill, Kevin Conroy, you know, setting that trajectory really for a lot, a lot more than I think we would can even realize. Definitely, definitely. But Jemmy, I want to ask you, what's your favorite Kevin Conroy Batman moment? You know, out of all the TV shows, video games you've played, what would you what would you describe as your favorite moment? See, that's interesting because one thing about him and his voice is for me, anytime you'd see it, anytime I read Batman, I still have that voice in my head. So when I was trying to think of before this episode, 
what was my favorite moment? What's a moment that stands out? I couldn't honestly really pick one, which was interesting to think about because I was thinking, oh, at first, maybe I'll pick like the Two-Face episode. That's one of my favorite episodes of that, his performance in that. Oh, but then you've also got how he was in Return of the Joker. Oh, but then I could also point out Arkham games. Oh, but then I could point out how I really liked how he kind of did a more comedic take on Batman and Justice League action. I could go on and on. So when I picked, the one I picked was he actually, for the DC Pride anthology this year, he wrote a short story that I actually really liked. It was really touching. And it was talking about some of his identity and some of how he related Batman to his personal life. I'm not going to actually say anything about it. I mean, it's the DC Pride anthology, so people can probably put two and two together. But I'd highly recommend, if anyone gets a chance to read it, a lot of, you can just literally look it up right now, uh, Kevin Conroy, DC Pride anthology, and you'll find the story. Really short, really sweet, but I think it's a really good testament, not just to the man, but to his mentality. And considering now this one of really the final things we got from him, I think this is the one that's going to stick with me for a while. Yeah, this was his last project, and I've seen a lot of all people online, um, you know, telling me, uh, recommending everyone who's, you know, every, everyone through their timeline to read it just because how much, um, yeah, it's called Finding Batman. And uh, yeah. it's basically a story about how Kevin Conroy, like how Batman helped him throughout his career and uh yeah i think it's a beautiful uh I, i'm i'm going to read it now right after we're done with this podcast i haven't read it yet uh and yeah i'm looking forward to reading it but um my favorite batman story um but not batman story batman moment uh would be um <clears throat> this particular moment from justice league and uh, unlimited i don't remember what episode it was but it, it had the character ace in it and um sh her, her uh, spoiler alert her character was about to die and in, in her dying moments, um, you know, we see Kevin Conroy's Batman walk up to her and, uh, you know, sort of <clears throat> sort of comfort her in those moments. And, you know, there, there aren't many there aren't many lines of dialogue in this particular scene. And, uh, but his delivery in the couple of words he as Batman he has is just so perfect. And it's a tearjerker every time I watch it. So, yeah, I, I would say that's my favorite moment. Uh, another favorite moment I could say... Um, uh, honorable mention um, is the nightmare ending from Batman Arkham Knight. Again, spoiler alert for those of you who haven't played the game. At the end of the game, when Batman defeats all the villains in the game, um, there's this secret ending that's unlocked. It's basically where <clears throat> uh, Batman goes up to the bat signal, drops his mask. He's basically given up being Batman because he believes he's done everything he can to save Gotham City. Um, he gives Jim, uh, Jim Gordon a final call returns to the bat mansion and uh, blows the mansion up and uh now i've seen i saw someone on twitter post that scene again uh just earlier today and watching that scene again sort of felt like a goodbye message um it sort of felt like you know i can move on now that's that was his goodbye message because that was the last major project i remember you know hearing kevin conroy in and um that sort of stuck with that really hit me hard today uh watching that scene again so i would definitely say that was an honorable mention of mine also, the episode in question is Epilogue. It's the finale of um, this first season of Justly Unlimited. It both serves as the finale for that one and also basically the finale for Batman Beyond as a whole. So it's a, it's a pretty important episode as a whole in the whole universe. Mm -hmm. yeah, if anyone sure. wants to watch it, look it up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but yeah, Jemmy, what, what would you describe as your favorite um, Kevin Conroy Batman project? Hmm. That's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. I mean, I definitely, it's a toss up for me. Again, he played him on so many different things. I vacillate honestly between my mood, whether I choose Justice League or um, Batman the Animated Series. Because I mean, Justice League, and I, when I say Justice League, I kind of count Justice League and Justice League Unlimited sort of as one thing. Because for all 10 purposes, one show, just four seasons, one show. But I would say for me, Batman the Animated Series, you really got to see that flex of those, you know, noir type of iconic stories. One thing I think that is kind of understated is the fact that how he's able to balance, not just, you know, everyone talks about his Batman voice versus his Bruce Wayne voice. Everyone talks about mm -hmm. that. But one thing I think people miss is the evolution of his Batman. He does go from sort of the more 
mm, not lighthearted, but at the very least, more open, more kind, caring. And you start to see that jaded progress over him throughout the process of um, that main the series. So by the time you get to Justice League, he is more like, you know, the Batman that we see when he's playing with the Justice League. That arc makes sense because they spent those four seasons crafting that. So we get to see that. On the other hand, with Justice League, you get to see Batman playing with the rest of the DC universe. Some one of my favorite Justice League episodes is um, one of my favorite Justice League episodes was the one that Ace was actually introduced in. It was a Wild Cards. So that's the one where Joker and Harley recruit uh, the wild, the Royal Flush Gang. So mm-hmm. Batman and the rest of Justice League have to stop them. And that episode is great because you've got basically the rest of Justice League trying and failing to stop the Joker's plan. Meanwhile, Batman seeing through all of it. So it's a, it's a really good episode that I'd recommend. But those two, if I had to pick one, I, mm, I'm probably going to lean more towards the animated series. What about you? Animated series, uh, See, for me, it's, 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 it's difficult because, again, I grew up with Justice League and JLU. So, you know, those hold a very special place in my heart. Arkham City is my favorite video game of all time. And uh, obviously, Mask of the Phantasm is just a masterpiece of a movie. Uh, but again, I'm going to stick with uh, Conroy's, uh, like w- w- what I like to call Magnum Opus, which is, again, the Batman animated series. His performance in that show defined Batman for generations to come. And like every time I hear the words, I'm vengeance, I'm vengeance, I'm the knight, I'm Batman, it's just goosebumps all over. And, uh, you know, whenever I read a Batman comic, that's the voice I envision. That's the voice I hear in my head, you know, when I'm reading Batman's lines. That's the voice playing in my head. It's Conroy's voice from the animated series. And, you know, it's just that's that's how I start. That's that's where it all started, the animated series. So I'm really grateful to him for giving us that. So, yeah, that would definitely be my favorite project. Uh, But, yeah, Jemmy, any closing thoughts before we close out this episode? Honestly, not really. I mean, I would just say my heart goes out, you know, to the rest of the cast. I can't Mm -hmm. imagine you know, again, these weren't just colleagues. These were people who were friends for 30 years. Paul, exactly. uh, Bruce mm-hmm. Tim, Paul Dini, Tara Strong, uh, Mark mm-hmm. Hamill, all the rest of the cast and crew that's still working on stuff. You know, there was even, I, I'm i not totally sure, but I believe there had been rumblings that he was already, he was had another that he was working on as of right now. So for the cast mm-hmm. and crew of that, I'd imagine it'd be hard. And of course, his family. But just yeah, definitely, definitely yeah. And you know, t- we had a whole other episode planned today, but we felt it was important to talk about this because of the special connection I have with Batman and Jemmy has with Batman. So yeah, uh, Conroy's Batman. You know, rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. You were I was as I like to say, our definitive Batman, the definitive Batman. Uh, you made me fall in love with the character, and your voice will live on for generations to come. Uh, I would like to pass on my condolences to Conroy's family and friends and the community as a whole. We have lost a legend today. But again, he will continue to live on in our hearts and his voice will be heard for generations to come. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, let us know in the comments below your favorite Kevin Conroy Batman moment and uh, your connection to the character. And uh, yeah, guys, we'll see you again very, very soon. Peace.